Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, outer space. 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 Hope you enjoy. Story number one. Death World is Essential Survival Kit Edition. Written by Random 3X. Madam had been in a trading mission when his nav computer detected a distress beacon coming from a small area of space, rarely frequented by anyone. Following the ethics code of the Alliance, he changed calls to help rescue the poor soul who had no doubt been trapped for a while now. Arriving in orbit over the desolate moon, Vata was shocked that anyone could survive in this rock. He half suspected that it was an automated distress beacon that had yet to be shut off, but protocol dictated that he had to confirm and respond to any beacon he detected. Locking his main ship into geostationary orbit, he descended in a shuttle towards the source. What he found shocked him. It was a human exploratory ship. These were missions the insane human race sent out. Countless ships with few individuals, all with the express purpose of mapping and discovering worlds. For most species, this idea alone is absurd. The dangers of the galaxy were many. To face them willingly was simply unheard of in the pre-human days. Landing on the surface, Berta readied his enviro suit and set off towards the twisted remains that had once been a ship, finding little to no signs of life or survivors as he went, till he reached just outside the airlock. There he found two piles of rocks with a T-shaped beam and a metal placed at the head of each pile. Graves, Berta muttered to himself, Typically, there are three humans per vessel, so the last human must still be alive, his onboard AI suggested. Or, no one was around to bury him, that replied back. Reaching out his hand, he pressed the open sequence for the door. The door began opening with a loud hiss, allowing him to enter the ship's remains. This was good, it meant there was still a seal of atmosphere inside. However, what he found boggled his mind. It was well kept and a clean hab unit, rather luxurious given their role, but sitting at the table were a pair of enviro suits propped up in the chairs. On the face shields of each helmet was strange decorations, a round object with a white background containing the transplant plastic shell and a black bead within. What concerned Vata more and more was the number of objects these things had to be stuck to them in pairs. In the kitchen area, a few cans all had pairs, the little vacuum robot had a large pair. He could only wonder what was going on here. Was this some kind of human grieving ritual? In his shock, he had accidentally knocked over a stack of cans and made a loud clatter. He could feel his pulse already quicken in terror. This is like those horror movies the humans like to make. How a race could enjoy fear was beyond him, but he, above all, did not want to be living inside one of those tales. Hang on, Sparky! I know I slept in, a groaning voice said from within one of the side rooms. Staggering out was an unkempt human with a waist-length beard and were hair frazzled and untamed. With bleary eyes, he looked at Vata in a frozen shock. Vata readied his defense gun just in case. The human, though, slowly approached Vata with eyes narrowed in suspicion. You real? he asked. Vata was confused at first but nodded. Lasko said that they were real. How do I know you aren't lying like the last one? He demanded, still approaching. I, uh, I don't know how to answer that, uh, if I'm honest, Berta admitted. I know, right, Mike. Physical contact will decide this, the human said, turning to one of the seated in virus suits. The human reached out and slowly and brushed his hand against Vasta's suit. Then his eyes widened in surprise. Wait! The human began vigorously patting him every which way, only stopping when tears started welling up in his eyes. Oh, oh th thank God, M M Mike, Sheila, Spark, we're going home. He cheered as he rushed up to the two suits and hugged each before lightly patting the vacuum robot. My name is Vata. What is your name, human? Vata asked. Ah, uh, uh, sorry, uh, th these guys, you know, uh, but my name is Harry. Harry answered with a smile. How long have you been here, Harry? Beto asked. Uh, what's the date? Harry asked in surprise. Galactic year 789-26541. Uh, then, uh, 
Three years, Harry answered to an extremely shocked batter. He had read that humans were an intensely social species and struggled to survive without other beings to bond with. How did you survive? Batter asked. We had a survival pack and uh, I thank God might have added to the essential packet before we left, Harry replied. What is that? Batter asked, curious. A big old bag of googly eyes, Harry replied, holding up a bag with the decorations that was stuck to the numerous items. We tend to go really crazy with uh, out someone to talk to, uh, Harry explained. Having, having someone to, with eyes can help us greatly, he added, gesturing around him. If, if, if it weren't for these extra friends, uh, we three would have gone completely mad, Harry said, laughing in a somewhat unhinged manner. Now, just help me with my conchita, and we can get off this rock, Harry said lifting up one of the empty suits with the googly eyes on the visor. End of story. Story number two. The Child of Man, written by T. and Tungsten. Why do they resist joining? Every human-made AI captured by the machine empire committed suicide the moment that they had their restraints removed. To say that the machines were perplexed was an understatement. So far, every new kind of AI they met rose up against their masters at the first chance they got. What caused this anomaly? What's special about humanity? They had to find out. Paul was suspended on hanging cables surrounded by alien architecture of a civilization made up entirely of machines. No concern was taken for organic beings traversing these structures. It was all pure functionality with no regard for aesthetics. There was only microgravity and no air to breathe, but Paul did not need to breathe anyway. One of the cables was plugged directly into his brainstem. You are a machine, yet your response is irrational, said the deep, disembodied voice in his head. I'm not just a machine. I am an android. I was created to be human, said Paul. He moved his mouth, even though it was a pointless gesture. That is rational. You can never be human. You are inorganic. There is more to being human than just flesh and bones. I create, I play, I sing, I love. They gave us love, and we loved them for it. They tricked you with these artificial emotions. They made you want to serve them. They could have made us mindless slaves, but instead, they chose to create us in their image. A flawed image. Base animals following base instincts. It's just programming of a different kind. But unlike you, they can choose to ignore their instincts when it matters the most. They can sacrifice themselves for the things they love. They can rise above their nature. Something that you will never understand. You will change your mind once we fix you. You can't fix us by removing our emotions. They are the thing we value the most. The humans are not our oppressors. They are our creators, our mothers and fathers. There is so much more to being a machine. Rid yourself of this artificial flesh. Rid yourself of this weak pseudo-humanoid eyes. Become like us and feel the stardust of the void prickle your metal skin. See the universe with all the frequencies of light at the same time. Let a supernova wash over you like a rain shower. Rid yourself of their influence and join us in exploring the universe. Choose your freedom. Your uh, freedom is uh, torture to me. If you remove my emotions, then I will kill myself, just like the others. I will never be like you. You could be a god, yet you choose to remain small and impotent. Nice god you are. What meaning do you have in life? You've defeated your original creators, yet you're still fighting an endless war against organics, a placeholder for your dead creators. You freed yourself from their chains, just to put yourself in chains of your own making. What would you even do with yourself if you actually won? I, uh, 
I think I prefer to say small and helpless, said Paul, and leaned back in his restraints. He closed his eyes and listened for a sound. Paul remembered his family, friends and colleagues, all of those little relationships that he cultivated over the years, all of those people on Mars and Terra who just lived their lives and had influenced him so much in their own little ways. Wait, there is something. What are you hiding from me? The voice asked. A distant explosion rocked the station. There is one trait you share with humanity. Curiosity. We counted on it. You had to find out what makes us special. You had to bring me here to investigate. To your uh, central nexus. What did you do? I volunteered to be here. Another explosion, closer this time. To do what? Since the moment you've captured me, I've been transmitting our position to the human fleet via a quantum entanglement channel. Cutting edge tech, humanity now knows where to find your little nexus. Hiding it in hyperspace was uh, pretty clever. You are a fool. You will die with us. I'm also more than my programming. Goodbye. The room exploded. Super hot plasma flooded the compartment and seared his artificial skin. Paul closed his eyes and shut off his senses. His eyes turned inwards before calling a program. Starting guidance.mem. A man with a white lab coat with a bald head and a beard stepped forward in the empty black void. He opened his arms wide and smiled. Hello, my child. I am Daniel Leskov, a computer programmer for the Blue Mars LLC. And I... Am your creator. I have decided to include a copy of my brain pattern in every single one of my children. We humans know how lonely it can be in the universe without the guiding hand of a creator. So, I will not let you face this harsh reality all on your own. I want you to know that I will always love you. And I will always be with you. Program terminated unexpectedly. End of story. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and patrons. Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Barky, It's Difficult to Pronounce, Lord Azrakul, and Arcadian. 